guys, welcome back to another video. This is a Just Catholic Things uh, series that I put off for a while. The, today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to stay Catholic during COVID quarantine, because that sounds good. Um, there is a companion blog post today, published today, as this is going live. You can check out my blog over at ganchiplans.com. I've forgotten which corner it's in already. Um, and that uh, blog post is all about how we spent our Holy Week. Uh, it was a very different Holy Week than usual this year. And so I detailed everything that we did, um, ways to celebrate with our family. Holy Week is already over, obviously, but hopefully this might give you some inspiration and ideas for how to celebrate your faith with your family every Sunday throughout quarantine as we're gonna be stuck at home for another few weeks at least. And I, I would love to hear your comments in that blog post about how you celebrated Holy Week and how you celebrate your faith at home, regardless of what that faith is. But in today's video, we're gonna be talking about what it means to be Catholic during COVID and what's looking different and what things are like, at least in our family, and I think some general principles for everybody else. In case you're interested, if you are Catholic or you aren't, you might be interested in how things go uh, when we are stuck at home. So we're going to be starting by talking about the precepts of the church. We're going to be talking about four of them today. The first one is going to Mass, and obviously this is a big one. Regularly when Mass is available, you're required, in order to be a good Catholic, to go to Mass every Sunday and on Holy Days of Obligation. There are a few of those throughout the year, special holidays. Now because we're all being asked to stay home and to limit large gatherings and gatherings of any kind, we've been granted a dispensation by our bishops to not have to go to Mass. So that requirement is not there for us right now. It's not there generally. If you can't go to Mass, then you can't be required to go to Mass. That's just reasonable. And so this is just explicitly stated that if you can't go to Mass during this time, which we can't, then that's okay. It's not a sin. But there are a few things that we're doing to try to keep Holy the Lord's Day, even though we can't be present at Mass physically. Um, most parishes that I've seen are offering live streams of their masses. One of the priests will get on the camera and it'll be just him, maybe just him and one or two people for the Sunday masses. We have our cantor there, so there's a couple of people there. Um, or sometimes it's just the priest by himself, and that's totally fine. One important thing to note that um, just because there's no public masses does not mean that there are no masses. What I mean is that Priests can say Mass by themselves, and they do regularly. If they're not part of a parish, or if there's more priests than there are daily Masses at a parish, or for whatever reason, priests can say Mass by themselves. Um, and it's important that they do. I don't know if it's a requirement for priests to say Mass every single day, but I think it's pretty much the norm. It's also the requirement for priests to receive communion when they do say Mass. And so priests are receiving communion. The Eucharist is still out there. It's still present in churches. Um, and so that, I think, is an important part of our Catholic faith that ma is maintained, that the sacrifice of Mass is still being offered daily all over the world. And we can actually participate in that by viewing the live stream. Uh, there's probably no difference, you know, between spiritual graces that you receive between watching a live streamed video Mass versus watching a pre-recorded video Mass. Um, but I kind of like the idea of watching it live because it's more like you're connecting to something that's happening in the present, even though obviously the Eucharist transcends space and time anyway. Um, but I, I like being able to watch it live, and so it's it's cool, especially since the, uh, the live stream Mass at our parish is at the same time as the Mass we usually go to. So every Sunday we will dress up, go sit in the living room as a family, um, and put it on the TV and we'll participate in the Mass, you know, singing along, saying the responses out loud, and being a part of the community that's present at Mass, even if it's only virtually. And the most important bit of going to Mass, obviously, it's the source and summit of our faith. It's the Eucharist. If you're not fully aware, um, the Catholic Church believes that Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist, and so that's like receiving communion is a big deal, and not being able to receive communion is a big deal, and I miss it. It's been a month now, um, and it's really, you know, it's a big deprivation to suddenly not have that grace anymore. Um, but what we do have as sort of a, you know, intermediary stopgap, and this is something that's available all the time, 
you know, whether you're Catholic or not, you know, if you're for whatever re reason ineligible to receive communion, say you're in a state of mortal sin, say you're not at mass or say you're not Catholic, you can make what's called a spiritual communion, where basically you make the intention to receive the graces of, of the Eucharist without physically being able to. Um, and you just say this prayer, it's available, I'll, I'll link it below. I'll find a, a copy of it and link it below. Uh, it's just a prayer that you pray saying, Jesus, come into my heart spiritually and give me the grace as if you were there. And uh, just as a, it's the best that we can do <laughs> right now as we're not able to receive physically. And so we, uh, we pray that prayer every time that we attend a virtual mass. The second precept of the church I'm talking about today is going to confession. You're required to confess your sins at least once a year. Um, and fortunately we have gone, we were lucky that we were able to go like the week before lockdown. Um, our, our parish had a penance service and we made it and if we were still trying to do the social distancing thing. Normally I would shake the priest's hand, but instead I just, you know, waved and respectfully walked away. Um, and so we're, we're grateful for that, that it hasn't been that long for us, but it's a tricky one. Because in theory, like I said, you can receive the sacrament of confession without touching the priest, but you have to be in the same location as the priest. That's one thing that you cannot do virtually. Um, you can't have confession over the phone. You can't have a confession over a live you know, video chat. Um, the reason for that, the point of a, what a sacrament is, is that it, it symbolizes the physical and spiritual nature of the human person in the action that we take uh, that gives grace. So it's a spiritual reality with a physical reality, right? So with the Eucharist, you have the physical bread and wine and the spiritual reality of Jesus' presence. With baptism, you have the physical water and the spiritual reality of being made the child of God and having your sins washed away. So with confession, the spiritual reality is having your sins forgiven. The physical reality is the priest, and he's there as if Jesus was sitting in front of you. So that's the matter of the sacrament, and it can't happen without both the matter and the form. So um, with confession, you actually do have to be present with a priest. Some priests I've seen online have been offering like drive-through confession, where they'll be sort of set up in one spot, and you can come through and say confession from your car. Um, and that's fine. You don't have to physically touch the priest in order to be absolved. Um, but that's not available everywhere. It kind of depends on what the local bishop thinks is a good idea, how severe the local infection rates are and all of that. Um, I don't know of anywhere locally that that's offered, though I haven't really looked into it. Because, like I said, we've been pretty recently. Um, so the thing about confession is if there's no way that you can get to confession, but you know that you need to go, you can make a good act of contrition um, between yourself and God and resolve to go at your next earliest possible convenience. And that is like a stopgap, especially since we're not gonna be receiving communion anyway. If something were to happen to you, heaven forbid you get COVID and die in the hospital, that would count, you know, cause Jesus, God can work outside the sacraments. He doesn't need them, but we need them. Um, and so making that intention is, is good enough until you have the opportunity to do it for real, right? So it's not like, oh, I can just ask Jesus to forgive my sins in my room by myself, and that's fine. It's like, it's good enough for now. So that's where we are right now. Uh, the next precept of the church is fasting and abstinence during Lent. So fasting means two small meals plus a full meal. Technically, basically it means abstaining from food, and abstinence in this case means abstaining from meat. So uh, during Lent, we're required to fast on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday and abstain from meat on, the fri on Ash Wednesday and all the Fridays during Lent. So that is easy enough. That's done at home anyway. But that's over for now. It's a time of feasting. Alleluia, he is risen. Happy Easter. The fourth and final precept of the church that I'm talking about today is to provide for the needs of the church. So that is something that is a requirement. The church does not require you to tithe as in give a tenth of everything. It just says that you should provide for the needs of the church. So if you literally have no money to give, then you give your time and talent. Um, and if you're, you know, have lots of money, then you should probably consider giving more. 
Um, and obviously that's something that at any time needs to be prayerfully discerned. Um, especially right now, if you're losing your job, everyone understands that that means that maybe you can donate less to your local parish. But that doesn't mean just because you're not going to church and bringing your envelope with you that you should not still consider donating to your church. Even if you're like, wow, this is a great time to just only watch live streams of the Pope saying Mass instead of my local priest. Great, but I think that you should probably still consider donating to your local parish. Most places nowadays have the opportunity to donate online, so I've actually just set up recurring donations uh, on the website so I don't have to worry about remembering to do it once a week. Um, and our daughter is looking forward to putting the envelopes back in the basket when we get back to church, but until then, we're still providing financially. We actually have upped our donation because it was about time we did that anyway, and uh, our church is getting less than they usually do because they don't have people putting cash in the basket. So do consider uh, giving to your church if you are not already. Obviously, that goes for any church. I'm sure that every church in the country is suffering right now because they're getting fewer donations. So the last note um, is that I'm actually really grateful that people have been listening to medical and scientific advice and actually staying home. I was kind of worried that people would use their faith as like a crutch and a misunderstanding of faith as a crutch and say things like, well, God's not going to let me get sick just by going to church. It's like, well, that's not really how that works, you know? Um, and I'm grateful that early on, you know, early enough on, the church um, made changes to the way things were done. Like, very early on, it was don't shake hands, don't hold hands, don't receive from the cup. Um, and then later on, obviously, all public masses have been canceled. And that didn't take too long. Like, they weren't fighting it. You do hear people fighting it, but most, for the most part, that's the minority. And most churches are going online, um, are doing what they can to maintain, you know, the, the body of Christ, but without being physically present with each other. And I'm grateful that, you know, people of faith are listening to reason. Obviously, it's really hard to not be able to go to church and to partake in the community there. And if you're Catholic, to not be able to receive communion is a terrible cross to bear. But it's what we're being asked to do right now. Um, obviously, we would never recommend that if you're giving something up, that you would offer up the Eucharist <laughs> instead of, you know, any other kind of food. That it's the greatest good we can receive. But right now, that is what we're being asked to give up. And so we can offer up that sacrifice for the salvation of souls and for the healing of the sick and for our own health and safety and holiness. And you know how they say absence makes the heart grow fonder. I think that by the end of all of this, when we're finally able to go back to church and be in communion together and receive the Eucharist, that we're going to appreciate it all the more and that our love for our church for our communities and for our sacraments will only grow deeper through this deprivation. So that's all I have for this video. I'm gonna post some resources down in the description below if you're interested. Um, Catholic.com and the Catholic Answers live radio show have been really great re resources. Um, I've gotten a lot of this information from listening to callers calling with all of their concerns because we're all sort of in the same boat right now thinking about the same kinds of things. So um, there's a lot of information that's available right now. I would love to hear all of your perspectives in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you're doing to keep Holy the Lord's Day, um, how you celebrate your faith with your family, how you keep your kids engaged when they're not in the physical church. Also, don't forget to check out that companion blog post I mentioned um, and comment there as well and subscribe so you don't miss all of my future videos. I'll see you in the next one on Thursday. Bye.